Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sins coming at you guys with the first episode of the Dry Down Fragrance Podcast, the inaugural Fragrance Dry Down Podcast. This podcast is also going to be done with two of my best friends in the fragrance community who are here with me today. And uh, Manny, go ahead and introduce yourself first. Hi there, my name is Manny, aka Cascade Sense. I'm really looking forward to doing this fragrance podcast along again, alongside two of my best friends here in the fragrance community and just in general. Uh, so this is kind of something different. It's not exactly live. Uh, maybe we'll work on that in the near future. But for now, I hope you guys enjoy it for what it mm -hmm. is and stick around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Timmy. Yo! Timmy. <laughs> I'm from Imagine <laughs> Set. Now, the reason I'm laughing is like, dude, you guys have no clue. This is like our fifth time trying to do this to the damn intro. So I'm, it went successful. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm Timmy. I'm from a channel Imagine Set. I'm so happy to be finally doing a podcast uh, type stuff with this, uh, with these two, my best bros of the fragrance community. Because um, we've been talking about this for a while and finally getting to do it. Oh, I'm all for it, dude. So, what's the topic today, huh? Yeah, so today we're actually going to be talking about the Fragrance Foundation Awards for 2020. So if you go to fragrance.org slash awards, you can see exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But this is a yearly award show where the Fragrance Foundation basically picks finalists from a bunch of different categories. And then they have an award show. and It's like the Oscars almost. For fragrances so we're going to be going over the finalists and a bunch of the different categories in the fragrance foundation awards and kind of giving our thoughts on that mm -hmm. because there are some interesting things and some strange things oh <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> in these lists Jeez, yeah i can't wait okay. yeah so like i said fragrance.org slash awards that's where you're going to be able to find this if you want to go online and look through what we're talking about but we'll describe everything pretty well for you guys here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Manny, do you want to go ahead and just lead us into the first, <laughs> the first category that we oh. can talk about? So the ones that we're most familiar with, we're going to go through. So more often than not, men's and unisex, I think they advertise it as universal yeah. here. So the first award to talk about is the fragrance of the year. Imagine walking up into the Oscars in the first award. Like, <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> yeah. For like best, <laughs> best male actor or whatever. That's kind of what we're looking at here. Fragrance yeah. of the year. I, I sometimes it's best supporting that they do just to get people into it, mm -hmm. but of like in general, wow. Okay, so men's luxury finalists. So this is stuff that could be designer and or yeah, it's, niche it, or independent. It's actually kind stuff. of strange how they do this. They have men's luxury and then a separate category, which is men's prestige. Mm-hmm. And it seems like... But the thing is, at the end of the day, there's fragrances in men's luxury that, you know, could lean designer-ish as yep. far as its scent, but it could lean luxury as far as its price point. Mm -hmm. That's why it's here. So the one fragrance we're talking about here is Sauvage Parfum. Okay, that's by Dior. That's a first nominee. Next one is from the Alchemist Garden line of Gucci. It's called The Voice of the Snake. Uh, next, we have from the men's... House of Siage line. This is the formal. And then from a fairly unknown mm. upstart brand, uh, primarily stocked at Bergdorf Goodman, Ignacio Figueres with Buenos Aires. Uh, so, okay, that's cool. I'm pretty sure that's the name of the brand. I don't see the name. The name of the, of the, the fragrance right is Buenos Aires. So, I, I, yeah, <laughs> is, so is I it? think okay. they have six fragrances. Yeah. And according mm. to Fragrantica, they're working on distribution. So I don't even really know how many people have smelled this. Probably not many. But each one of the fragrances is based off a city, it looks like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But here's the one thing. For Fragrance of the Year, for a fragrance which I believe was discontinued the year of, the final nominee is Straight to Heaven, <laughs> by yes. Killian. Mm. All righty. So um, who would like to unpack uh, this first? I would like to talk about the giant kind of like elephant in the room. Let's kind of look like a, <laughs> yeah, the, God, that, that fragrance. What's it, what's it called? Ignacio? Ignacio? Ignacio, yeah. Ignacio Figueres. Like, so I, I actually went and looked at the page of the, the actual Fragrantica page for this. And I was just wondering why it made this category when there's absolutely like, um, no reviews or no voting or anything for it. Yeah, <laughs> very confusing. Yeah, that's very I, confusing. I don't know. I've never even heard well, of the fragrance un until seeing it here. Yeah. 
I did think that the brand was called Ignacio Figueras with Buenos Aires because, I, to my knowledge, I think he's from mm. Buenos Aires as well. Uh, but I can't say anything I about the scent. No. Has a few votes on Fragranica. Um, cool. Carlos Benaim was the mm. perfumer. Uh, lovely stuff he's done. A and lot of and you know, it's like stuff. absolutely unknown when there's not even like any um, voting on the notes at all. Because normally, when you go in for Grantica, even fragrances that are like unreleased, there's already people voting on like the likes and dislikes, the notes and all that. And there's right. already some comments. But this one, zero comments, zero voting on the notes. There's like three votings on the likes and dislikes, but like it is absolutely unknown in the grand scheme of things. So. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> right. and, and at the end of the day, we're citing these from the Fragrance Foundation mm -hmm, website right. itself. So it's not like this is, you know, mm. stemming from anything mm. on Fragranica. So the criteria of this getting awarded mm. um, or nominated to yeah. begin with is... Your thoughts, nominated. viewers? Especially Your thoughts? <laughs> <we're seeing stuff. laughs> and and like. one thing I guess we should go ahead and point out now is that um, these have already been voted on by their expert panel and mm -hmm. their member voting. Yeah. And then consumer choice voting opens in August of this year. And then the actual winners are announced in September mm -hmm. via webinar. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these ones, you can't really vote on them yet, but in August you should be able to go to this website, I believe, and, mm -hmm. and place your votes. But it's going to be relegated to now, these Now, I will lists. say that it, it is pretty cool how they do things via price point. It's just kind of confusing. Mm -hmm. at yeah, first. yeah, I, and I'm not sure what the, the, the one thing cutoff is either. Mm -hmm. from prestige to luxury i'm yeah. not sure like what the monetary cutoff is there mm -hmm. it looks like it's like a hundred yeah that would put sabaj yeah, parfum right Zan, yeah. right there yeah right because mm -hmm. let's be real sabaj parfum is more expensive than a lot mm -hmm. of these fragrances right so i get why it's there in the first place but so, so the other yeah, issue with fragrance. all this stuff, just to kind of keep it moving as far as these fragrances go and not to get hung up on that one is straight to heaven extreme is um, a, a, an outlier amongst these other fragrances. Mm. Yeah. Totally. And uh, that's because Straight to Heaven Extreme uh, did not come out in 2019. <laughs> it came out in 2017. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's a limited edition. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's a little odd that for the fragrance of the year, you have a fragrance that came out in 2017. Yeah, it's a lot of hmm in this one, <laughs> in this whole list, actually. Yeah, that's yeah oh. so that's just kind of, totally. it, it would be like a movie that came out, you know, two years ago, three years ago, mm. being included as a picture of the year nominee yeah. at the Oscars. Mm -hmm. It would just be like, I don't understand yeah. how this works. Just looking at this, like, you'd be really confused yeah, sometimes... on what the actual criteria in any department is. The prize, the yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the, scent, the, the popularity, the number of sales, it's, it's just unclear. Even the year, like with the addition of the like, Straight to Heaven, right. extra, even the year, yeah. it's kind of like... Mm. <laughs> it's really like they just threw some stuff at the wall and they were like, well, it feels like these that. are the finalists. It does feel like that, yeah. yeah. What it feels like for the most part, like from what I see as far as what they're trying to do criteria-wise, was they have a cutoff for price point, which they didn't actually mention, which is right. whatever. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, they probably just went off of scent alone because... Clearly, they didn't do this by year, no. like Timmy lamented. So, uh, I don't we'll know if they said it by anything. But do you guys have any predictions? <laughs> um, well, yeah. you know, based off of last year, the two winners were Bleu de Chanel and Dior Sauvage. Mm -hmm. Bleu de Chanel Parfum and Dior Sauvage mm -hmm. Eau de Parfum. Mm -hmm. So, it would not surprise me if Dior Sauvage Parfum wins just because of that. Yeah. So, maybe the most commercial offerings will win here. So, I guess that's the... Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I think the um, Sauvage would win just for the fact that a lot of people, when they look at this list, they're going to be like, I know Sauvage, I vote Sauvage, and I don't know the other right, four yeah. in, in any way at all. <laughs> yeah. for, for me personally, probably Straight to Heaven Extreme is what I would go for of these five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a little odd, okay. again, because that's not a 2019 release, mm -hmm. so... Yeah. What's that? What's what that about party? you guys? Do you have a do you have one that you would choose just based off personal preference from the five? For me, it's Savage Parfum as far as quote. <laughs> yeah. You know, if right, it's not like I think it's the yeah. best fragrance, but I would presume that Savage Eau de Parfum was not the best fragrance last year either. As right. Far as just so, yeah. so you're saying that's the one you think would win? Consider. 
Yeah, not only think would win, but I guess this is also considering cultural impact. So if that's the case, yeah. then okay, that that, that would make sense. Yeah. yeah. If I would, if I were to, I don't think it's this yeah. If I were to vote, since I hate Savage Puffum so much, I can't give it to it. <laughs> I'm gonna give it to the formal since I own that one and wear that one myself. I'm gonna give it to that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll hop from there. Men's luxury to men's prestige. Prestige. So this is what we mentioned before. Mm. So this is what you would more typically think of as your designer fragrances. Your more affordable mm -hmm. men's fragrances as compared to the higher tiers, your niche, your luxury in this circumstance. Mm -hmm. So there are five finalists. Oh, God. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go just right down the line as it appears on the website. Look at this. So first up, John Varvatos JVXNJ Silver Edition. So this is the Nick Jonas collaboration with John Varvatos. After that, K by Dolce & Gabbana. Then Mont Blanc Explorer, followed by Ralph Lauren Polo Blue Gold Blend. And then last but not least, Versace Eros Flame. So those are the five finalists mm -hmm. for the Men's Prestige well, well, first, Fragrance of first the Year. First off, at least for me, this is already a better list than the one previously. <laughs> at least you recognize it, it, them, it right? It feels like it makes more sense. It does make sense. <laughs> Some of the fragrances I don't like at all, but at least oh, yeah. I can kind of wrap my head around mm -hmm. this one. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. Yeah, that's it's a more coherent list. There's not stuff out of left field. They're, wow. you know, what's it called? Not mm -hmm. discontinued. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. And and they're <laughs> all from 2019, I believe. I so. believe so. I believe so. Unless we're wrong. No, 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 no. Not Eros, right? Not Eros Flame. Eros Flame. Eros Flame. Not, that's no, 18. No, that has to be 2018. Oh, yeah. That's Flame's 18. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, yeah. So, almost made sense. It almost made sense. It almost made sense. <laughs> <laughs> Just barely. Again, I, I really don't understand how that works. How it can be the fragrance of the year. You would, you would think that it's, again, like every other award program that's ever been set up where you're celebrating those year's releases, but whatever. Your thoughts, viewers? If you're on YouTube, you can comment, you know. <laughs> Leave us your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, for me, um, JVXNJ Silver is a terrible fragrance. <laughs> Just yeah, that's true. Really, really, really extremely boring. And just completely forgettable. Mm -hmm. And then K by Dolce & Gabbana, I also am not a fan of. Yeah, I would agree um, with those. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the silver. Uh, actually, out of the whole line, I don't really care about either one in particular in comparison to a lot of the other John Barbados. K, mm -hmm. also same thing. I really did not care about that one. There are very few fragrances that I smell, and as a reviewer, like I, I, I told myself I wouldn't buy, because normally as a reviewer, I would buy a lot, but K, <laughs> it's just very boring, man. It, it really is. It's, it's not honest. like yeah. it's, you can name a hundred fragrances better than that, given time. Mm. Yeah. And and what's interesting? That's not uh, hyperbole. Yeah, really not. Yeah, can. Is is um John Barbados, JVXNJ, the first one won packaging of the year last year. So this is a fragrance oh. line that's already won at least once, mm -hmm. and now it's being featured again as a prestige finalist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I think I do take issue with that winning because it's largely the same style bottle from yeah. John Varvatos mm -hmm. that got nominated yeah. to begin with. So, if there's maybe a new fragrance line from another brand that was put up here um, versus a bunch of flankers, I would probably show favoritism towards some new creativity, not just in both hue and design, but as far as the physical mm -hmm. bottle yeah. design as well. So I guess like that's something different, but to expand on John Vervedo's JV and X and J, it's probably my least favorite. Yeah, it is for me, mm -hmm. pretty easily. I would I would take even K mm -hmm. over that one. The only one and I agree on. The, okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, sorry. The only one I actually agree on in this list would be Explorer. To be honest with you, that's the only one yeah. I agree on being on this. That's list. what I was yeah. going that's to say. That's my pick to win it. Yeah. Like. <clears throat> yeah, Explorer for me is the winner of those five. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so unanimous on that one then. Unanimous. I think it, because that one actually left them like a mark, like an actual influence on, you know, people actually use yeah. it, talk about it. There's a lot I of think coverage, that's you know, actually, that it makes sense. I think that's a monumental fragrance, to be honest, because it's the first Aventus fragrance alternative 
from like a mainstream mm-hmm. Western designer yeah. brand. And yeah. it was done pretty well. Yeah, that actually done well it's and actually good. competes with the rest of the uh, alternative market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Absolutely. we'll just keep on moving right down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this one is new 2020 award. So I guess that means this is a new category for 2020. Oh. Uh, fra- fragrance of the year, universal which means unisex mm, universal. in this circumstance, luxury. Mm. So you're more, more expensive. Is universal, I guess, more of a LGBTQ oh. plus mm. inclusive I, I guess term, it could guess. be, yeah. yeah okay. So we've got five fragrances here. Uh, Byredo Sundazed is the first. Creed mm. Aventus Cologne after that. Mm. From the Alchemist Garden Collection of Gucci, The Eyes of the Tiger, making people think about Survivor and uh, Rocky for sure. <laughs> Uh, Rolling in Love by Killian, and then Tom Ford, Lavender Extreme. Lavender Extreme. Oh. Unpopular opinion, I actually quite enjoy Lavender Extreme. I don't know. I like it too. I like it. <laughs> it that's not an unpopular I like yeah, opinion. I, like I just think that it's not your type of scent. It's I'm not something that would wear all the time, but I do like it. I do like it. The bottle, I, ex- and I'm kind of drawn to chrome looking stuff too, so that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you're, you're so <laughs> Look who's talking. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, for real, you guys. So these five fragrances, I think the obvious fragrance is Aventus Cologne. Yeah. As far as just recognition mm-hmm. in an award setting like this, I feel like it's the heavy favorite. Yeah, it is going to be. I feel like that one is going to win just outright because it's Aventus Cologne. Yeah. yeah. Manny, do you disagree or...? To a certain extent. Just Man, because, okay, so I'm, hey, I'm going to talk for Manny. Manny thinks Byredo is going to win. Just saying. <laughs> no, that's not it either. Okay, full disclosure, I did receive this ball. Oh, there you go. Um, He's received it, it for came you. came out. <laughs> you shill. So, but like, as far as if I were to walk up into Holt Renfrew, Neiman Marcus, Burgdorf Goldman, and I'm smelling these things, maybe as a critic, as far as the what grabs my attention the most that doesn't smell remotely familiar to anything else from the brand previously i would actually take a little issue with a niche fragrance flanker kind of beating everything at this point i will give this to rolling in love Uh, i think it's a charming fragrance that is the definition of something unisex and i I think it's a a nice step in a different Mm -hmm. direction for killian and for me i hope it wins but Mm -hmm. now while i can agree with what you're saying I think that when this goes to general voting, just everybody having their chance to vote, mm-hmm. the Creed Aventus name is going to carry it past all these other fragrances. Yeah. While that mm-hmm. might be true, it's just like who's who's voting? Because I feel like there's a less casual. I would crowd point that's voting to well. last year, where Blue de Chanel Parfum won its category. Yeah. And Sauvage Parfum won its category. Its category. <laughs> Yeah, no, and I get that too. It's just like in a niche category that is unisex, I feel like women are also voting here too. And as a result, I so, think other Okay, so they, let's, let's, I'm going to touch about the, the ones that I think would not ever have a chance of winning. That's the Gucci in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fat chance on that one. <laughs> just no. I don't, I don't think a lot of people no have, have, have ever gotten a chance to smell that, myself included. I have. I, I smelled it in uh, Canada. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't go to we Canada. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. invites, guys. I'm not so super this. familiar with it or anything. No, but. I, I'm not at all. Yeah, it was yeah. They, look, they look cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they've uh, got the apothecary bottle design. Yeah. I dig that. Yeah. I just think that if you're going to like put betting favorites here, that Aventus Cologne's the betting yeah. favorite. Me too. Not finna lie, when I first saw the Alchemist Garden Collection, the shape of the bottle with, you know, something that looks like an apothecary or whatnot, they made it look like that with, like, the matte look and, like, the garden-esque vibe. I can't help but, like, look at that bottle, though, and think of uh, Louis Vuitton's uh, collection. Yeah, I understand what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I look at the top, I kind of felt mm. that way. That's my only thing against the mm, Gucci's. Louis Vuitton Other Gucci that, beef. They're, mm, they're outrageously <laughs> still, I still dig it, but... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, up next is Fragrance of the Year Universal Prestige. Uh, Manny, 
I'll go ahead and let you run through these because you've got an All Saints fragrance I on there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's that. <laughs> now, All Saints Sunset Riot is the first nominee for Fragrance of the Year Universal Prestige. Now, if you aren't familiar with that scent, it is like a summary Baccarat Rouge 540 alternative. Uh, also on the list is Pacific Lime mm-hmm. by Atelier Cologne, uh, then Memoir d'une Odeur by Gucci, and then after Sunset by Killian from Killian's Sephora yeah. collection. Mm. Interesting. Yep. Is that what it's like technically called? Sephora Any- collection? I don't think so. That, um, it, that's the ones that are oh, exclusive right. to Sephora. Oh. Yeah. yeah, they're more affordable. Um, mm-hmm. 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 So, Which is really cool because they went down market when everyone mm-hmm. seems to be going yeah. up market. It's, uh, it's what you do, right? You buy when people are selling and sell when people are buying, as they say. Oh, oh. Um, oh knowledge. Big range. Uh, Ty Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> so, of these four, I think Gucci has got to be the favorite. You think Gucci is going to be a favorite? Um, I think so, of these four. Mm-hmm. Just because when that fragrance was released, it yes, the exactly, hype, that's, what, that's what I'm going off of here. When it was released, it did get a lot of coverage. A lot of people were talking about it. And as such, I think that just makes it kind of the favorite because if people are rolling through their, their votes, they're you know plugging in their winner for each one of these, and they get mm-hmm. to these four, and they go like, well, I heard a lot about this Gucci, and then they just click it and move on. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I'm, I'm mm-hmm. thinking. That's my prediction. Well, but I actually like want to mm-hmm. propose something to you guys here. Going forward throughout these picks, and I feel like we should have done this earlier, I th- think that each one of us should have a lock. <laughs> a lock of the week. Like per, the per, <laughs> yeah, so like a lock of the week. For me, the lock of the week is definitely this yeah. Gucci. Uh, That's what for damn sure. Yeah, I think I'm like the black the sheep page. here because um, yeah. I feel like Pacific Lime is going to win over the Gucci. But just just because of the cheer, the, the smell, and the just, um, I, I, I would say... Oh god, I like oh, the smell, like the and smell. it's, it's, it's everywhere. Enough. Like it's in every Sephora, a lot of people smelled it. But, um, so is the Gucci. So well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but I, I, like, for, at least here in Vegas, I don't see that particular Gucci in too many stores here, as well, opposed I to think, the Pacific. Well, yeah. in stores you don't see it. Yeah, no. dude, I see it in stores here. No, I see it in some stores. It's not. <laughs> yeah. As much as there. <laughs> That's a drug stores in Canada, and Ashley yeah. can vet me for drug that. store have that good. Well, dude, I need to move to Canada if your drug store has these kind of fragrances. Our drug stores what have private hell? blends. Oh my like, god, I need to move. Yeah, it's I'm true. in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, Vegas has a so lot of fragrances, those. but oh my god. Not yeah, so dude, it's definitely there. I think you just yeah. you haven't. I just paid I probably missed it. That's what I did. But, um, <laughs> you missed it, yeah, for sure yeah. you did. I, I, I just still, think you're I still dodging Pacific, that I still, I still vote women Pacific Lime, guys. <laughs> it's okay. You can hold that out. Hey. Shout outs to uh, Triple A. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm pulling one for Bradley here. There we go. He likes his bergamot soleil, or soleil bergamot, however you say it. Said Ron Ivron as well. All yeah. right. So um, next we'll go to Fragrance of the Year Hall of Fame. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fragrance of the Year Hall of Fame. This so I'm assuming what they mean by this is that the winner gets inducted to the Fragrance Hall of Fame, not that it's the Fragrance of the Year. Mm-hmm. So, um, Timmy, do you want to run through those? Yeah. <laughs> Curve for men. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I, feel <Hey>! like, <laughs> I feel like it's been, a, it's been too long for this to have made it just this year. <laughs> it should have been like a few yeah. years back. Then we have uh, Frederick Mouse, Moss Ravageur. We have Longcom's Trezor, which is, I like that one. We have uh, Philosophy, Amazing Grace. I've seen yeah, this bottle, I don't know. never I smelled have, yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And Victoria's mm-hmm. Secret, very uh, sexy. Victoria's yeah. Secret. So now, Timmy, I know you're a fan of. Uh, I Tresor like Trezor La uh, Nuit. That's my Tresor. favorite. Trezor is okay. Yeah. It's not bad yeah. either, but. Um, yeah, but I know you're familiar yeah. with that line. So I'm wondering, does that remotely scream as something that is Hall of Fame worthy? Because Gosh. for me, Must Ravageur and Curve for Men for sure in yeah. their respective price points. But everything I else I feel like in the, um, for Long Com Tresor line, it's actually pretty popular. I would say even in Thailand, a lot of yeah. people use the original Tresor. Tresor line of weed, probably not as popular as the original, but this line definitely has influence. So I would say yeah. that it yeah. definitely deserves a place yeah. on this list. But the other two, the other two, the next, the other two women, I, I really don't know, man. <laughs> That's the two uh, yeah, questionable. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. The, the Lancome for sure. Yeah. 
And then Philosophy, Amazing Grace. I've never smelled it. I'll see that. Yeah, I've seen by that. The I've, I've seen that yeah. bottle around. Like, I just, this, that, it's not. It's not something that I haven't seen at all. But I have not smelled and it. it. It's a little bit difficult for me to take Victoria's Secret fragrances seriously. All seriously. <laughs> yeah, same um, here. Because you know, they're just kind of like an impulse purchase that your girl, girlfriend or wife does when she goes to buy underwear. Yeah. <laughs> and then scoops up a couple bottles of that, and they'll have like a special running where you can get them for however much off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've never really smelled a Victoria's Secret fragrance and been like, oh my God, mm -hmm. the quality on that is insane. Now that being said, Curve, you don't smell it and go like, oh my God, the quality on that is insane. But it was literally everywhere mm -hmm. for a number of years. Yeah, it definitely has um, a lot of influence with that bottle. With that being said, who are you predicting? This one's tough. It's a toss up. Because um, for me, for me though, yeah. I would say it's either Curve or Tresor. One of those two would win. Depends on how many more men voters than female voters. But I don't think the voters are going to go for the other two for sure. The other two women are definitely not making it. But Must River Sure may be a little bit of a fan over there. But Curve definitely has a landslide um, advantage over Must River Sure, personally. It, it's super difficult for me. I think that if I was just going off of the fragrance itself, I would go Must River Sure. But... Mm -hmm. As far as the voters, uh, I pretty much agree with what Timmy said. I think uh, Philosophy, Amazing Grace, and Very Sexy have no chance. No chance. <laughs> and I think it, I think it's going to come down to casual voters picking either Curve because of nostalgia, or if a whole bunch of ladies vote, mm. then the Lancome could take it. Yeah. What do you think, Manny? I was going to say, just because I'm double-checking this right now, Mainly because you and I both know that uh, Musk Ravageur has quite the cult following within these right. fragrance circles. And of course, Curve for Men is a uh, proven discount. Yeah, I favorite. mean, Musk Ravageur has uh, how many different said, limited edition bottles at this point? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, with what Mal does almost annually mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, however, just knowing the type of person who is going to be voting here, and just by seeing the sheer number of votes uh -huh. on Fragranica, we have 2,700 for Musk Ravageur right. in general versus 1,000 20, for Curve. I actually think Musk Ravageur Oh, but no, check this, though. Oh, 2,700. 2, 5,080 oh, votes. Oh, God, yeah. Right. No, and I get that. It's just... Um, hmm. So if we're going off here, 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 here's, of... Uh, here's my prediction now. I think the male viewers might be split between either Curve or Must Rubber Jerry, while the female viewers are just going to be Tresor like... Takes Tresor takes it. Tresor takes it. <laughs> I feel like Tresor the, definitely the takes it. The Lancome takes it. Actually... Yeah, yeah, Lancome takes this one, yeah. You, got, you guys have convinced me. Yeah, yeah the Lancome, Lancome takes it. Mm. Yeah, 2,818 people on Fragrantica say they have it, and 2,844 had it. Yeah, so, so that's it. I think the Lancome that's takes it. That's GG. Lancome takes it. All right. And with this, let's go ahead and take a quick break. Oh, break time. Break time. Kill we'll be back in just a really few cool mid-roll. <laughs> okay, guys, welcome back. Now we're doing mm. the fragrance of the year, Breakout Star. <laughs> so Amazing selection. <laughs> I know. This is another one of those ones where it's kind of almost confusing about what it's supposed to be. But Fragrance of the Year Breakout Star has three finalists. So mm -hmm. there's Carolina Herrera, Good Girl, Eau de Parfum, mm -hmm. Maison Martin Margiela, Jazz Club, and then mm -hmm. Joe Malone, Wood Sage, and Sea Salt. All right. <laughs> so you've got three options. Oh, and, and there are some obvious questions that you might have yeah. re Dude, regarding these. How to, un how to even begin to unwrap this? <laughs> so we're, we're talking like off cam earlier about how we think that Breakout Star means that something that was released a while ago and just now became like something popular today. The problem with that <laughs> is that yeah. all of these are pretty popular throughout the years that it's been Yeah, out. yeah, Jazz Club. <laughs> has been around wood sage and sea salt has been around for over five years oh, and yeah. and those are if not the most popular some of the most popular mm -hmm. releases for that brand period mm -hmm. yeah like we think of when you think of joe malone if you ask a lot of people when they think of joe malone wood sage and sea salt is like one of the first name that comes to mind for sure 
if anyone is like a Joe Malone fan, even even non Joe Malone fan like myself knows that this is the, one of their most popular releases. Uh. Yeah, if we're talking to uh, you know an Asian trust fund baby who probably has Joe Malone's up the wazoo. This is definitely one that they have one or two bottles. Yeah, mm. Mm. yeah, relatable. And last year though, <laughs> in 2019, the breakout star, the breakout star fragrance was Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette. Ah. So yeah. that was the winner so, last year. That didn't take off the year. Cause, yeah, cause, yeah, because it, it wasn't because no one used it in 2015, you know, or 2016. Yeah. <laughs> so no it's, it's very it confusing to me because it says breakout <laughs> star as if, you know, this fragrance was kind of released and then not talked about, not worn. And then all of a mm -hmm. sudden in 2019, people were like, oh, my yeah. God, wood sage and sea salt. You've got to get it. Yeah, um, but I didn't it's, hear it's about Sauvage seller. until last year when I read the list either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't really understand how these are the breakout stars. It doesn't really make sense to me. But that being said, uh, Manny, of those three, prediction? I'm going to go, because like, this is one I'm kind of clueless on, to be quite honest, just because I don't know how much clout Jazz Club has as of recently as far as did they get this many votes to warrant? Yeah, dude, it's it's the breakout the of the year. I, I mean, I guess it did. <laughs> yeah. But Woods Agent Sea Salt drives a hard bargain for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say that, but mm. again, I'm not remotely sure. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. That's uh, that's interesting. For me, uh, this one, I don't think Jazz Club is gonna win. I I just don't feel it. Um, but this they're one, in Sephora. there's two. Yeah, there's no, two. I'm just, just throwing that out there <laughs> because we were but talking like, about it before. <laughs> <laughs> as far as Sephora favorites, I thought like someone like uh, the, something like Beach Walk would be. In yeah, the, but the uh, um, for me, it's like there's two huge, huge women's release right here. And although Joe Malone is unisex, but let's be let's be honest, a lot of women use these more than men do, and it's gonna be either one of those two. I'm actually leaning towards Joe Malone, if like yeah, if a lot of um. Asian view viewers <laughs> vote <laughs> is gonna be Joe Malone, so I'm actually le I'm leaning towards Manny here. I'm like, yeah, that's Joe Malone for sure. See, with Station Sea Salt. Yeah, yeah, I, I also am leaning that direction. Um, for me, I don't immediately write Jazz Club off. I think it could win, but I think of those three, that the Joe Malone is probably the one that carries the most clout behind the name, and oh, I yeah. think that could help. Mm -hmm. So Joe Malone there, I think we're all kind of in agreement. I guess yeah, we're yeah. unanimous uh, for it. It's just we're not as cemented as picking like a Savage like earlier. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Who knows? Hey, we'll do a follow up to this. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll follow up once the, actually once all this happens, the voting and everything. We'll follow watch, up and watch, see. Watch, 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 Like we're all wrong on every yeah, category. Yeah, everything and just with like complete morons. <laughs> we're like just big idiots. Like oh, he's <laughs> all wrong. Next oh, up, goes. we'll do packaging of the year, the men's finalists. Men's packaging of yes. the year. Yes. Mm. So there are wow. some repeats here from earlier on. None. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we've got Ignacio <laughs> Figueres, mm. Buenos Aires, uh, John Varvedos, JV, X, and J, Silver Edition, K mm. by Dolce & Gabbana, Tiffany in Love, for him by Tiffany and Co. And then Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb Night Vision. Those are the but five Honestly, five looks finals. like it's sponsored it's like, by dude, Monster. This know, is right? like lol at this point. Yeah. You know, like it's, um, I think this is, this is like pulling a lol. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> so what's interesting like, here uh, is the JV X and J Silver Edition. This is technically John Varvatos defending the packaging crown from last year because they won last uh, year with the exact yeah. same bottle, just blue instead of silver. Right, that mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I guess based on that, you kind of have to go with they're the, the Barbados. They're the defending yeah. champs. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. We're just gonna we're just gonna pick the Barbados because they won last time. <laughs> so right. just like, looking at them here, more, I mean, the, like you said yeah. earlier, the Barbados bottle is the Barbados bottle. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. this one has kind of a heavier feel to it. They tried to make it look a little metallic with the mm -hmm. uh, gradient paint scheme and everything like that, and. I've always liked the Varvados presentations, mainly because you can pick the Varvados up from discounters for a great price. Mm -hmm. And the presentation is pretty good for that, the mm -hmm. price that you pay. But is it ever something that I've looked at and been like, my God, this is the best presentation I've seen all year? No. 
Uh, although Artisan Pure looked pretty nice. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It did. It looked really nice. <laughs> Better than the JV X and J stuff. The, the thing, stuff the thing that the thing that gets me is that like I don't I don't know why they would include packaging that's just a different coloration than the packaging that's released years yes. before. You know. Well, that's like, like I would think that you would run. Yeah, I, I would think that they would run some more unique, uh, you know, unique presentation that was introduced last year, not something like this which i really i don't know dude and, it's just a disappointing again, these, looking list <laughs> yeah. to me. some of us uh or i guess us talking about these awards is not just critiquing what's there but also questioning we're like, also questioning why the, the, the uh, why yeah <laughs> why? i think what they need to do <laughs> better <laughs> next year is like just make the criteria more transparent i guess because there has to be more impressive design yeah. releases here, yeah. or just yeah. in general for me. Mm, yeah, in general, like in general. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they have K on here, um, which like, is just a plain rectangular bottle and a tacky crown. I mean I know it's kind of mm -hmm. love it or hate it. Some people really do like it. Mm -hmm. I personally but to say don't. it's the finalists. Yeah. Come on now. I mean there's that, a lot of niche brands out there that has amazing packaging. That yeah. You know, but the keyword is men's here, right. so yeah. yeah, I guess There's so. Yeah, it needs to be marketed towards just yeah. men's. Yeah. Well, I mean, I between it. these these five, do you guys have a clear favorite for yourself? I think it's a Varvados, not for myself, but if I was picking personally, uh -huh. I mean, I don't know much about the brand, but I'd go with the Figueres. I think that's I think the one that looks the best just from the pictures. That being said, I've never held yeah. a bottle from that house in my hand, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Hard um, to say. Yeah. I'd probably have to go with the Varvados. Oof, oof, rough. Yeah, Manny's going for the defending champ over here. <laughs> uh, for me, I will go, I'm going to, oh, God, this is just a hard pick because, um, again, like Ashley said, if I never held a bottle in my hand, I really can't judge it. I can't. Yeah. So I'm going to go with the... Because the Tiffany love for him is a better bottle than... That's yeah. the one yeah. of, of these, of the ones that I've held... Which I own all four of those other I know than you the first. It. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite, presentation-wise. Mm -hmm. The Tiffany and Love of those four. So yeah. I agree it's my favorite, too. Yeah, that's for damn sure. I've always um, liked the Spice Bomb, so I'm going to pick the Spice mm -hmm. Bomb. Yeah, I always look I just feel it. like a part of me, if I had to pick something that's more fringe, I guess, I do like the Figueros, but at the end of the day, I'm just going to pick the high percentage. Yeah. Barbados. Fair so, enough. Yeah. Yep. So after Excellent. that, we'll just we'll head right right to the uh, packaging of the year Universal, and we'll try to Yay. run through these pretty quickly right. because honestly, these um, I've only seen a few of them in let's, person. <laughs> let's look at some of these amazing niche packaging guys. Wow! Unique. Wow! wow. <laughs> oh, these so, are uh, great packages. <laughs> yeah, so. I don't know. How, I don't know. Like. <laughs> Two or three of these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one is uh, Kareen Reutfeld. Reutfeld. Uh -huh. <laughs> Seven Lovers Lawrence. Uh. Um, yes. Uh, I apologize for the, the butchering of that name. Uh, after that, Essentials. Good morning! Exclamation point. Scent Mist. Then we have mm. from the Alchemist Garden, uh, The Eyes of the Tiger once more from Gucci. Then we have the Paco Rabanne Paw Collection, Strong Me. Followed up, last but not least, Tom Ford, Lavender Extreme. Extreme. Okay, I have to say this. Um, Essentials, good morning, scent mist. Like, <laughs> are we, uh, hold on, are we also including, like, everything, not just personal fragrance? Because <laughs> yes. that shit looks like a room spray. A, yeah, it, yeah, like it actually, spray. I mean, it, it says it's a scent mist, right? So you would yeah, assume that it's... Yeah, what's that supposed to mean? Yeah, I don't know, hey, man. It hey, also the looks like... Um, dude, is wonky. It looks like wonky. a little, yeah. like a... Uh, flask like a it? chemical flask or something a little bit mm. like the nomenclature beaker. bottles yeah beaker mm. so yeah i don't know man and then the paco so, Rabanne, that I've, i have not liked those bottles to me they're like that they're cap sons dude yeah they look strange and the cap <laughs> is very small on there it's just uh and then the first one yeah you see a little straw go down <laughs> am, I, am i wrong sun? i'm gonna find out you take <laughs> off the cap the sprayer is like i've seen the bottle in person as well yeah <laughs> so. They're not I think great, I think I've actually seen them, but I, they didn't really stick out in my mind. I think no. the first one, Timmy and I were talking about this. It looks like a Halston Z14 bottle made mm -hmm. love to a Diptyque bottle, and then and that's, that's what that. came out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> I think shout out to Italian Cypress. Of these five, the Gucci is my my pick. 
I think that's the best looking. I got the Gucci winning on top of it being my pick too. Like yeah. Tom Ford is pretty and they feel nice in hand yeah. always. Yeah, so yeah. always. Know that. Yeah, classic. However, maybe Gucci is gaining some traction based on just their mm-hmm. looks alone at least. Yeah. Because they do feel nice in hand and they do look mm-hmm. awesome on paper. I think it could win. Yeah, yeah, so for me, my favorite one to look at is probably the Gucci the Gucci one because it does have kind of like a historical look to it. But to, for me, if I was to if I was to pick which one would actually win by voting, I still think the Tom Ford's gonna take the cake. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go Gucci, and we will see who the true champion is yeah. when the time if, comes. If, if, the, if Capri Sun wins. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> the Capri Sun, it's going to take it. <laughs> okay, so watch, no one else watch, has every, a lock pick yet. Everyone's so going to vote for that now who watches this and be like, yeah, screw you, Timmy. <laughs> We're going to vote Capri Make sure Sun. to vote for the Gucci. <laughs> Just make sure you do it. So uh, Tim, uh, Timmy has the, the Ford, and then Ash and I have the Gucky. Yeah, yeah. Gucky life. <laughs> Gucky life. <laughs> Gucky for the win. Gucky for the win. And yeah. we'll keep on moving right to the next one. Perfume Extraordinaire of the year ah oh, perfume extraordinaire so so i presume this is yeah. like the more There's some familiar like, faces just different like the most out there perfume. I, i'm assuming yeah most extraordinary mm-hmm. perfume of the year mm-hmm. so we have yeah. four four finalists here manny do you want to run through these yeah totally so uh we have by zoologist perfumes that's squid she mm-hmm. to canada we have by Comme des Garçons. Uh, Copper Eau de Parfum, shouts to Japan. <laughs> uh, we have uh, another uh, FW 2020, uh, Takasago, I guess, shouts to Japan again. <laughs> and Frederick Mao, Rose A. Queer. Uh, so, uh. this is uh, pretty interesting stuff here because there's one fragrance that typically just jumps out in my mind more than all of these as far as quote unquote being next. Uh-huh. And that's the zoologist. Yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 Yeah, so I mean, it just takes it for me. I don't. Copper <laughs> is a nice fragrance by Comme des Garçons, and it definitely does a good job of trying to channel that that mm-hmm. that note. Uh, but it's kind of like been there, done that as far as, of mm-hmm. course, Comme des Garçons would take on Copper. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I just feel like I'm not shocked and I'm not as excited to see something like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for me to smell something like zoologist yeah i'm biased because he's my friend but uh squid like i feel like the execution is really there you know with the Mm -hmm. inky vibe it's also oceanic it just feels like deep waters but in a just um i guess Mm -hmm. a more habitat way for a squid i feel like they nailed it Mm -hmm. and for the kind of voters that we have here and the fact that there's no like true cult classic that they're going up against yeah i think zoologists can't take this yeah Feel yeah. the exact same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's going to be kind of like the voter starling here uh, of these four. Mm-hmm. So for me, again, if I were putting out favorites, that would be my favorite. And then probably the Freddie Mall afterward. Freddie Mall, yeah. Yeah. Rose Queer, I actually like, but it's been getting dunked on review wise. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've got I a sample of it that uh, Eugenius it. sent me, and I actually really do mm-hmm. like it. Yeah, I, I think it's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just don't see the other three having remotely as much coverage as the zoologists. Yeah, I, I think overall that squid is the, the favorite there. Yep. Yeah. Pre- pretty oh, comfortably. Right, right. So I think we're all in agreement there. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you want to do you want to do Indie Fragrance of the Year? Touch on that one really quickly. Indie Fragrance of the Year. A lot of them, the though, year. I have not smelled. So Same it's kind here. of difficult for me to, oh, to comment on that. I honestly haven't smelled any of them. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just well, uh, Manny, looking at this. I, I, have you smelled I mean, slow dance, Manny? Yes. Okay, so uh, are you going with uh, that one for the win? That's not a question, sir. That's a statement. <laughs> do I think that slow dance is going to win? Yeah. Okay, so do we do we want to run down the cap, like what's listed? Here, yeah, right? just run through them really quickly. But I'm going to say right off the bat that the majority of these I have never smelled, and I could only give very minor opinions on two of them. And I think those okay. are the only two that have a chance yeah. anyway. That's mm-hmm. fine. Okay, yeah. so we have Slow Downs by by Rito. We have uh, Oud Saffron by uh, Eric Butterbaugh. We have Miller Harris Blousey, or 
yeah, I guess it's blousy. Yeah. Uh, Notorious Oud by Diaz and Durga, and uh, Tom Brown, 927, 65 Vetiver Absolute. Now, mm. I've only smelled one of the fragrances here. And yeah, slow dance I'm still waiting for 927, 66, you know. that's I heard that's a better version. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> a joke. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I've not smelled yeah, any of these. <laughs> yeah, these are true, true indie fragrances in the sense that even if you mm. go onto Fragrantica, a number of these just don't even have a single review no. and they have like mm-hmm. one person that's voted on them period so very and this limited is just a distribution band on what is quote unquote indie and what is not so to see byrito here despite their insane distribution with luxury goods stores and perfume stores alike mm-hmm. around the world they're still listed here as indie because i presume it's because ben gorham still owns a company and it's not like they're part of Estee Lauder or L'Oreal or a parent company like that. Yeah. I guess that makes them eligible for this award. That being yeah. said, I also think they win it. Like, mm. uh, I think so. I, these I think ones, so, too. I don't see having just, a cult following either. So yeah. I have to go with the popular phrase. Just, just by distribution alone, Barrio takes a cake. Because as, as, as popular as DS and Dirka is, they're not in Vegas. They're, yeah. they're just not. I, there are no, no, no stores carries them here. That is a fragrance brand that is fringe outside of maybe the northeast united states mm-hmm. let's be real yeah so they distribution alone no I'm, distribution. Gonna, I'm gonna go for byredo uh, yeah i've got to go with byredo as well though i do dig ds and durga oh ds and durga oh, they're, they're, they're good like, i actually like ds and durga quite a bit myself yeah yeah like and i just i know they're from nyc and i just want to jokingly call that not notorious Oud, notorious oud <laughs> oh dude, dude, right. got it which categories are we Got jumping him. to next we are doing we are consumer to... choice of the year, year mints and this is the final so one we're, we're the that down. we'll talk yep. about yeah mm-hmm. consumer choice of the year mints so this i'm taking to be the most popular fragrance of the year for men period now actually i, I i'm such a dunce I feel like I've made it just to this point and actually just now realized, and I could be wrong, but consumer choice voting in August 2020 is only going to be for the consumer choice of the year. No! <laughs> so when I said that at the beginning... That would be so terrible. <laughs> yeah. So when I said at the beginning, the voting yeah. in August, I think it might just be these. It's only for these? Oh, but still, like the uh, other, the other experts have already voted for the other right. Ones, right? So I wonder if that means, yeah, yeah, the experts have already voted. So uh, maybe but they've already chosen all of the <laughs> the winners that we've already all spoken about. All the other about. winners, we just don't know about it. And this, this is what we're relegated to voting for. Ah. Uh. Perfect. So with that being said, who do you got? Oh my god. Oh, okay, so there are three options. <laughs> There's Boss Bottled <laughs> Infinite by Hugo uh-huh. Boss, Mont Blanc Explorer, Versace Amazing. Eros Flame. Those yeah. are your options. And I've got Explorer and a landslide. Mm-hmm. Yep, Explorer, landslide victory. For me, I feel like this category should be a little bit more straightforward in terms of the, just the name. It's, it's probably like the the best sellers or you know the most popular in general. Well, this general. is the like essentially the fan award. The right. fan award, but Man. most Ball infinite. Come on, come uh. on. Yeah, that's not fair. Yeah, Come BBI, on now. I'm not down with. Here. I mean, okay. I, I figured you would have Savage Parfum. Yeah, exactly. I was, I was yeah. thinking exactly that. Like, I would think a Savage would go there instead of this. Or hell, even a K, which yeah, or that, you know. <laughs> well, so Olivier Pichu has a great chance of coming away with one of these, right? <laughs> Since mm. um, he was involved <laughs> with Explorer and Arrows Flame both. So Yo, shout out to Nick Minardo if uh, Nick actually uh, squeaks it out. Yeah, that would be sick. Yeah. That would be a, a sick upset. That's pretty gnarly. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's disappointing. <laughs> I thought that we had more of a say. Uh, yeah. It's just the way this is set up, it's kind of all over the place. It, it doesn't really yeah. tell you, like, what There's are no the, the criteria. Yeah. There's no actual criteria besides, like, a loose definition of one. Which is one thing that I hope they do like a better job at next year for the next list. But yeah, yeah, Explorer, so, dude, uh, all the way. That's my vote. So that's your guy's lock, I presume, is Explorer. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a safe one too. You, yeah. 
You know what? I'm going to change my lock to this just because I don't see how Explorer loses. Because Arrow's Flame, I mean, it was kind of up and down as far as how well it was received. There's some people who are proponents of it, especially its yeah. confidence factor. I think it's because it's competing said, with its own brand, uh, like the original. Yeah. Too, way yeah, too much. Like, yeah, it wasn't. Do you it, want a fragrance that is like that, that is quote unquote not doing anything much different on top of the original? Mm -hmm. But this is, again, somewhat groundbreaking with it being the first mainstream event as well. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and, it, and it's good. So, like, I kind of have to go this route despite it not also being original too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, explore, for explore for the win. Yeah. So yeah, what, I think what, that what did we learn here, guys? Uh, lesson, <laughs> lesson of the year. You know, just make event as comes. It will always do well <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, and you'll you'll crush <laughs> Even it. Even in a fragrance award, <laughs> it will always do well. Yeah, I mean, there I could go. honestly see Explorer taking everything that it's nominated in. Yeah, I would be I surprised. Can see that too. Hey, but we only get to vote on the, you know. <laughs> oh, the I know. You know, it's weird. The packaging for Explorer is better than pretty much all the packaging of the. Yeah, the all men's the one finalists. that was mentioned in the <laughs> men's prestige category. Yeah. And it's a new bottle. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like yeah, it's better yeah. packaging. A lot of these other ones are. Well, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. well. Yo, Explorer out here taking names and getting robbed in some. Yeah. Mont Blanc, man, they they came at everybody with the the first designer Aventus, and then cleaned up, and everybody else is mm -hmm. just like, man, I wish I would have done it first. Because mm -hmm. you know that you know multiple brands were sitting on that. They were like, should we do it? I don't know. But and Mont Blanc was like, you know what? They copied us before. We'll copy them. Hey yo, can't blame them. <laughs> you can't blame them. It's the, it's right? the truth. They, individual <laughs> was a thing. Exactly. If done people, by. Homeboy's good friend. Yeah, and people agreed. don't know I what mean, we're talking about. So yeah. Mont Blanc Individuel came out first. And then yes. Creed came out with Original Santal, which smells oh. suspiciously similar to Mont Blanc Individuel. Is that so the now, same as like Excess and Himalaya too? Excess and uh, Himalaya, yes. Yeah, yes. that too. And, and Original Vetiver and uh, Mugler Cologne. Mugler Cologne. Mugler. Yeah. I mean, the thing is with uh, the reason why the original Santal one is kind of uh, significant is because Pierre Bourdon, who did the initial one in Individual, also did Cool Water back in the day, too. And that was a fragrance ah. that is based off of Green Irish Tweet. Yep. And uh, Excess came out in 94. Himalaya came out in 2002. Conspiracy is like, oh, you took my Mont Blanc, let me take your Green Irish Tweed. We'll trade one. Over well, I love Creed. I do love Creed, but they certainly do have a few fragrances that are mixed suspiciously mixed similar. It's a mixed bag. Yeah. E e kind e of got off on a tangent there, but, mm. but yeah. Anyway, that was a lot of fun, guys. Thank you for Mm -hmm. Yeah, for Yo, sure. Thanks. And we'll, Thank and we'll do a follow up in September to see how mm -hmm. right or wrong we were when the mm -hmm. awards winners are announced. Apparently, they're doing it via webinar, of course, with everything going on right now mm -hmm. in the world. Um, it's not really practical to have a, a big event with a lot of people. So, yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. True. yeah. Should be fun. Yeah, it should be fun. And also, Any guys. Closing thoughts? Thank you. Mm -hmm so much for watching us uh, here we'll be we'll be back here like every week so yeah there yeah we go. That's we're going to be talking about just anything that kind of interests us in the fragrance world and talk about that for you guys here mm -hmm. and uh so it could be literally any, anything you know news things like this new releases even occasionally guests perfumers creative mm -hmm. directors other creators whatever we're going to be doing a lot of different things so stay tuned for that Manny, and Manny's going to give away one bottle from his collection every stream. So Manny, every which week. one are you giving away this stream? Yeah, every week. <laughs> <laughs> and Silence. with that being said, we will see you hopefully next time right. with All another right. take yeah. on, what are we called again? The Dry Down, the, dry the Fragrance downs. Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did we introduce also, that at the beginning? Oh man, we saw We definitely we did. did. We definitely did. We? did. Oh. Okay. For sure. Yeah. I just forgot. All right, guys. I hope. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here at the Dry Down. See you guys again next week. 
See you guys. Peace. Thanks.